Hey, it's you reigning supreme, the doll queen. Welcome back to my channel. Cause I'm the fucking supreme. So today I have received a lovely two pack in the mail that will um, be pushing back all the previous reviews that I have filmed. So here they are. We got the Disney Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas Monster High Skelector two pack. This two pack lots of brands you got mattel monster high disney nightmare before christmas all of those brands in this like one two pack which is crazy but yeah i was fortunate enough to not be put in the uh queue for very long so i was actually able to purchase one of these sets as um a lot of people were put in the queue for like seven or so minutes so then by the time that they were out of the queue they were um sold out by then and of course that sucks but that's not on us it's on mattel for not making enough for this like collaboration because they should have known that it was going to be the biggest one yet so i'm sorry for all those who didn't get them and this is just a review so you guys can see what they look like up close. And it's not meant to be like, huh, I got them and you didn't. So, yeah. Uh, so let's start off with the box. It is a similar style to uh, Annabelle to where there's an outer sleeve. And on the outer sleeve, we have Hold Nightmare for Christmas. It is raised. So it's a little bit of texture right there that we can see photos of Jack and Sally. Um, also, like, parts of them are raised. It's cool. Then we have Mattel down here, and from the makers of Monster High Collector. Nothing on this side, and nothing on this side. Um, the back has that. Disney's Nightmare for Christmas. J. Hart S. True Love Never Dies. Debuting in the fan favorite film, uh, Disney Tim Burton's Night Before Christmas, Pumpkin King Jack Skellington and Dreamer Sally embark on a wild misadventure uh, that captures the spirit of Halloween, Christmas, and true love. This collector doll pack celebrates the moment that Jack and Sally realize they're meant to be f together forever. Dressed in a boo-spoke suit with a frightening skeleton print, Jack is ready for a haunting night with Sally, who's dressed in a creeptastic off-shoulder dress with petrifying patchwork print this delightful collector item captures the nightmarish fun that awaits every night in halloween town um then right here we have a little basket full of uh a random assortment of stuff like a potion bottle and a dead fish or like fish ghost looking thing um so that's from the makers that's collector right there uh the top of the box is slanted and it has a window where you can see the top of them, a skelet, and then the bottom of the box has Mattel Creations logo, Mattel right there, and a little barcode. Um, mine did come slightly damaged, uh, if I can find it right here. It's a little dented in. It's literally so minor, and I take these out of the box, so I don't care, but I know like an inbox collector would like flip their shit. So there's that. Um, so let's remove this sleeve, which is a bitch to remove. Oh my raw. Oh, there. So there's the pack. The sleeve is annoying to take off. Um, it's very gorgeous. You can see Jack and Sally in there. Even if my Jack and Sally are slightly wonky, I'm... It's not like I can return these and get a new one, so th this is what I'm stuck with. Um, but they look fine to me. And then we have a little, like, cemetery gate. There's a pumpkin, and there's zero, which, honestly, for this being a $90 collector set, which I'm sure this license is, you know, a little pricey, a little heavy on the price tag, so I guess that makes sense, but they should have included zero in here. Would have just made it feel complete. Um... And then down here, we have little gravestones. One of them has Monster High Collector. One of them has Monster High Crest. And the other one has a Frankie Skelet with uh, lightning bolts. So, because Frankie is the main character of G1. And you can see Jack and Sally in there. Uh, they look really cool. Then we have 
Tim Burton's Night Before Christmas and holographic stuff. And yes, I do have a pride flag up in my room. Slay for the gays. Um, and then here we have a whole little snowflakes to simulate the little Christmas time thing at the very end of the movie since this is when it's set. Um, we have little like texture on the hill, I guess. Um, a pumpkin, pumpkins, and then colors and decorations may vary. Interesting. Um, and you can see Draculaura's little drippy heart with bat wings and Claudine's heart with a little tiger print right there. So it's very interesting that they added the little main character. Oh, well, here we have a little tear in the, it's like scuffed up right there. So again, I don't care because I keep, I unbox these bitches, but that would definitely flip an uh, inbox collector shit. Um, and then over here, we have the same stuff, except instead of pumpkins right here, we have tombstones. Um, and there is no Cleo or Laguna for the gravestones. It's just the skelet and a, a skull symbol. It's just sad because if we had Frankie, Draculaura, and Claudine, we should have gotten Cleo and Laguna mentioned. You know, I'm just a little pissed because I love my girl Laguna. Um, then we have this gorgeous stock photo of them. Well, I don't know if this is a stock photo, but just a really gorgeous photo of them. Like, they look so cute. Uh, so cool. I am a fan already. And um, as you can see, the background is uh, the classic Swirl Hill, but it is covered in snow and ice because it's at the very end of the movie. So, you know, Santa made it snow at the end of the movie. So now I can uh, just go ahead and unbox these bitches. I know it's going to be painful for some of y'all, but a bitch going to do it. They are out of the box and I am, uh, like, I'm enthralled. These are some of the most unique dolls that I ever owned. Like, they are so, so different from any other doll in my collection and from what I've seen. Uh, some of the other, like, most, like, most different dolls would be larvae. If you don't know what that is, look up larvae. It's hilarious, and I'm sad that I missed out, but apparently there's a restock in November. Or, like, this month, because this month is November. But, yeah. Expect Larvi to come soon. Because I, I want that bitch. She's so funny. Um, so, first we have the Certificate of Authenticity. It is, um, as we can see, the designer was Rebecca Shipman, who is, like, the main, uh, like, the head for the Monster High team now and then Mattel creations forget about authenticity um and they look so cute together but we're gonna take a look at Jack first because I don't I mean I ended up liking Sally more but you know we have Jack and I'm so glad that Jack is stayed male because I like boy dolls and it makes me sad when like Monster High likes to gender bend them because like boys are cool too they make cool dolls. Like, just look at Rex from Shadow High. He's a cool doll. Um, but he is very accurate to his look in the movie, which I'm fine with. Um, I just wish they took a little bit more of Monster High liberties. And by that, I just mean giving him five fingers instead of four. Because if you look, he has three right here and a thumb. Which is probably accurate to the movie. Um, but... It just looks strange in the Monster High world when, like, Skeleta, who's also a skeleton, has four fingers and a thumb. Just a little strange choice. Um, and he is on a completely brand new body since there has never been a male skeleton. Um, so that's pretty cool. His stand I put around his neck because um, his waist has, like, a plastic piece in it. So it's a little too thick for the stand clip to go in, but... I will be removing that uh, when I show you his body, because we'll we'll get to that at the very end. But it's pretty cool. He has a completely brand new body sculpt. Um, wow, this is not really working. But his stand is much, much, much taller than any other Monster High stand we have ever had. It is also extremely bowed. Um, both of them are. I'm 
not sure why. It doesn't look like the plastic was stressed or anything, so it's like they were meant to be like that. Interesting choice. Um, so we have him in all his glory. Super, like, shiny eyes and their little airbrushed uh, vinyl head. Uh, that's side profile, like, very accurate to the movie. We have all, of, like, the teeth. His little mouth's open. Uh, we have this bow, which is classic Jack Skellington bow, but unfortunately it is plastic. I wish it was fabric for $90. I honestly kind of expected it to be fabric, but it's Mattel. So these are literally like playline quality. Yeah, or at least Jack is. Sally is a little extra, but Jack is very playline quality because the, like this material feels very like papery and a little stiff. It's not that nice and it's not lined either. So you can see the bad side from this side and that's not really that cute. Um, but the print itself is cute. It has all these stripes on it and a little skulls on them. So that's cute. And then he has this uh, orange, uh, black and orange striped vest because he is the pumpkin king after all. He needs something orange. Um, and then there's this little white piece underneath with two black studs on him to act as buttons. And then he has these pants on, which are the same material as his little jacket right here. And then his shoes are little cute dress shoes, but oop, they have the iconic hill from the Nightmare Before Christmas on them. Yeah, which no paint detailing, which is a little sad. I would have liked to have seen like white laces or something. Um, he does have ankle articulation, so typical boy articulation for him. Although I cannot bend his knees, or at least when I try to gently, it's not working. Same with his elbow. So we'll see what's going on. And we can deconstruct them at the end, so I can let you know how the pieces are. So that is Jack. Pretty simple. I wish his accessory was zero, but unfortunately he did not appear in this, which is... It is sad, because Zero is such a cute character. So we'll just set him aside. And then we have the star of the show, Miss Sally. Um, and she's very gorgeous. Her hair is um, just a center part all the way down. No style to it, no product in it. So it feels really nice. I don't have to wash the hair, which is great. Um, it's this like deep red, almost like auburn color. It's very movie accurate and it looks so gorgeous. Um, it makes me sad that no Monster High character has orange hair. I literally just said that and then there's Torlai literally right there, but yeah, I want Torlai to have this color, which it's a similar color to Torlai in G3, but slightly different, but I'm stupid. Anyways. She has this headband on that's just all black plastic. There's a little bow right here, swirlies and little things, like pine cones maybe. And then more swirls on it. Like I said, I wish there was more paint detailing on these uh, plastic pieces. It's a little bit of a shame. Um, her earrings are these little drop down hearing, earrings with cat heads on them that have yellow eyes. Um, very similar to uh, Holiday Draculaura. And then we have her stunning face. This is a completely brand new head sculpt. Don't even be like, oh, it's a modified, it's like a, it's Honey Swamp's head sculpt. Like, no. Uh, ever since, like after, ever since Greta Gremlin, all the collectors have had unique head sculpts that have not been used on any previous Monster High doll. So just stop guessing at this point. Um, she is very stunning. Like, look at that face. It's very, like, very Tim Burton with the, uh, really shaded eyes. It's very cool. And they're very glossy, too. Um, we have Sally's signature crossed little eyelashes up here and down here. And it's just, like, sculpted really cool cool or really well um then we have like this teal eye makeup on her and then we have these thinner eyebrows which i don't think she had eyebrows in the movie so um 
definitely a good choice to add eyebrows because eyebrowless dolls look kind of weird. That's my opinion, of course. And then we have these like really detailed, like more detailed stitches than what Frankie ever got. It looks like a blue line right there and then the white crisscrosses for the thread. Her lips are very like puckered and in and are this like corally color. It's very similar to her hair color. Um, and then she has stitch lines right there and there. Mine is slightly off right there, so there's a tiniest little gap, but I've seen other people's that are like a little higher, so I'm glad that mine turned out great. Um, and then her body has all of these teal stitches going along it. I will also be uh, taking off all her clothes so you can see her body, just to see where all the stitches are. So you can see some on her hands or her arms right here. Um, Cause she is, similar to uh Frankie to where she's like kind of a rag doll put together uh kind of Frankenstein-y uh we know that she's filled with leaves that's what's keeping her alive electricity well not electricity was it I don't know uh, her body has leaves on the inside which is crazy um we have this really cute little necklace that is um like a thorn vine little thing um and then her dress is so nice because we have these two satin pieces right here one yellow one swirly pink and then we have black zigzag stitch like this is not printed on like you would expect this is actual stitching and then there's actual stitching up here at the neckline and then we have these uh puffed netted sleeves which are so cute because sally's dress was very very simple in the movie so I'm glad that they like amped it up here and then we have this little belt right here that is black and orange striped that matches Jack's vest so they like go together and it's really cute um and then we have more uh pieces right here like we have this like this fabric here this polka dot fabric here a little skillet right here um and then on the back we have all of those patterns, super cool. And then it's all like an overlay of um, mesh goes over it. So I thought that was a really cool look. Um, and then yes, this is another like mermaid trumpet-esque silhouette, but for Sally, it works because like right here would be the end of the dress typically, but they just literally extended it with these two layers of really soft nice lace that has surging at the edges and it just kind of looks like a flower um with the silhouette it's so cute and then this lace is gorgeous it has all these spider webs uh a spider web design in it super pretty where was this for elvira justice for her and then um we do like this is like so movable and breezy fabric like this is just so much nicer than jack's they put more budget into her which like obviously they would because girl dolls sell better but like they're in a two-pack so i don't fucking know um so you can see more stitches along here so that's pretty cool she uses the og body sculpt by the way um they haven't used the pre-production sculpt which is sturdier and they should continue using it. I don't know why they're like, yeah, yeah, let's make a whole entire new updated body sculpt that has thicker limbs on the inside so they don't like break as easily. But let's only use it for six dolls and that's it, or seven dolls because it was the Cree Productions and then Draculaura, Frankie, and Claudine's Honkator dolls. And then they just like swap back to the original 2010 body. And it's like, what was the point of that? I don't know. I just find it stupid. Um, and then we have these shoes, which are really cute. We have more of the swirly designs that Jack's shoes had. Um, we have vines going all across from there. And then her heels are these two little potion bottles. So we have um, Deadly Nightshade, which is what she used to poison her creator. I forget his name. Um, over and over again so she could escape and be like, fuck you, bitch, I'm out of here. And then on this one, we have Frog's Breath, which is um, really, really strong. So it's what she used to hide the scent of the Deadly Nightshade. I mean, 
and it worked every time. Like, she was like, you cannot contain me. I can always get out of here, bitch. Um, and then we have her purse, which is a spool of thread. Um, and it has teal on both sides. Um, and you can open it up to put nothing in there because they don't come with anything else. It is an entirely brand new sculpt. It's not Threadorella sculpt or G2 Frankie's purse, like others have thought. It is completely brand new, has slight differences, but it is very similar. Um, so now I am, I don't know why I'm putting her back on the stand because I'm literally about to undress these hoes. So if you're offended by doll nudity, you're weird because there's just pieces of plastic, but whatever. Um, so beware of that. I will be undressing them now. Oh no! So here is Jack's body. It's very cool, actually. Um, it is flexible at the spine because it, then it won't snap. Um, and then all the thinner parts, like the arms, are a little, like, rubbery so that it won't you know, snap. So, glad to see that. Um, the ribs aren't, like, they don't have the holes in between, and neither does the uh, tibula and fibula. Is that right? I think so. Or unless if that's your arm. <laughs> Whatever. Because um, Skeleta has, like, the hole right there in the holes in between here. Fortunately, Jack did not get that. And that's okay. Because he still has, uh, he's still pretty cool and he still has all the articulation that a typical male monster high doll would have. So there's your look at Jack's butte. And then I took out the plastic piece because the plastic piece on Skeleta usually helps her stay on the stand. But in this case, it's a female doll clip versus a male doll clip. So it just didn't really do anything, so I took the plastic piece off. Oop, look at those booty cheeks. Anyway, let's look at Sally now. Oh, he almost stood up. Mr. Spindly, you gotta stand up for me, boy. Yeah, so now he's standing up, uh, and here we have gorgeous... Fuck you. Then we have gorgeous Sally. Um, I'm still enthralled with the face. Like, that's just so good. Um, and then we have all the stitching on her. So we have a stitch right here, here, and down here. One right here, 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 here. And then two that go across there. One that goes all the way across from there. And then... You can just see the rest of the stitching on the limbs on the back. So yeah, pretty cool. So now let me dress these mofos back up. Oh, before I do so, I would just like to state that this whole entire thing is just one single piece. That's very G2 of them. It's um, a little disappointing, but it's Mattel, so I'm not surprised, but for $90, this shouldn't have all been one piece, especially when it's this cheap of fabric. Just saying. So here I have them posed. They're super cute. I really do like them. Um, do I think that they're worth the $90 price point? Like all collector Mattel shit? No, they're not. <laughs> I'd say they were probably worth about $60 by Mattel standards and by MJ standards they're probably like a $50 set 40 40 to $50 set um like if you we were to split it in half Sally is she worth $45 I would say yeah she's very comparable to uh the holiday collection maybe in some ways being a little better than like Skeleta um but then when it comes to Jack is he worth $45 hell to the fucking no because with that all being like pretty much one piece here and then just another piece right there and the fabric being so cheap and the bow tie being plastic, he's very much a $20 doll. I'm just going to be real. So with that, 
it's like, oh, if you don't think they're worth the price, why'd you buy them? Because I know that this was my one and only chance to get them at $90 versus $200. Um, and I would never pay $200 for these dolls. And if you do, if you do buy from the scalpers, like, fine, whatever. Um, you do what you want with your money. I personally just wouldn't do that. Um, and like, not judging you, but like, if you have a problem with the scalpers, don't buy from them. I'm just gonna keep it like that. We're just gonna leave it right there. Cause, you know, if you buy from the scalpers, they're like, oh my god, then we know that this property, people will buy from it, so let's buy more of them. So just like, stop. Let the scalpers have their stock. But I know that people just get so, like, much FOMO and are, get so desperate to want them that they do end up spending that much money. And it's just a perpetuating cycle. So if, what, what we can do to stop the scalpers is just don't buy from them. And there's always going to be someone that does. And that's fine, I guess, because on the buyer, because they chose to do that. But not on the scalper, because fuck them bitches. Get a real hobby. Anyways, from your rating supreme, I grant you a wonderful, glorious, fantabulous day. Toodles.